Hi gang, Rob here. It's the afternoon of 4 November 2019. Coming to you today on an, an interesting weather day in Indiana. It's kind of warm. 55, 56 degrees, a little bit of breeze, kind of gray. Might be a before dinner motorcycle riding day. I don't know. <clears throat> I'm coming on today just to kind of discuss something that's absolutely nothing to do with knives or Christian faith or guns or anything like that. It's just a really big day if you're a race fan in Indiana. This morning, as I was having my coffee, I was scrolling through my news feed and I saw a really interesting little blurb of a story that turns out to be true and it's a big deal. Penske Entertainment Group has purchased the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Penske Entertainment Group has purchased the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Wow, it took hours for this to sink in. And during my in-between times today, I just did a little refresher research on this guy, Roger Penske. Um, and man, the more you dig, the more impressive a person he is. I remember being a young race fan in the in the 80s, and by then, Team Penske was already a well-established and venerable force in open-wheel racing in the United States. So much so, so that for a, for a kid like me who was sort of a fan of the underdog, Team Penske was the evil empire. They always won. They had those Marlboro cars. They had Mirzas and Unser's and Fittipaldi's and Sullivan's and Donahue's. You know, they, they had the best equipment. They had the best talent. They won races. They were the irresistible force of auto racing. And, you know, I kind of viewed... Roger Penske and Team Penske is this big corporate organization nobody could compete with because they had so much money. And it wasn't until years later that I, I really started to dig into who this guy was. And man, he is an impressive man. He is an impressive man. Before 1965, when he was an active race driver, he won 55 races in several different series at the top levels of motorsport. He retired, opened a car dealership in Philadelphia. It's now one of the largest dealer groups in the United States. He has a trucking company. He has a, a media production company. He is a prolific philanthropist. The city of Detroit owes its renaissance to Roger Penske and his money and the money of friends that he convinced to invest in his plan of revitalization of the city of Detroit. He was drafted to run for mayor of Detroit and declined. Residents of Michigan are trying to get him to run for the Senate. He's in three Hall of Fames. He's won 18 Indy 500s and five season championships in open wheel racing. By the way, he has 64,000 employees an annual revenue for the Penske Corporation around $32 billion a year. And what does he love to do more than anything? Go racing. Yeah. By the way, his money wasn't given to him. It was earned. Uh, he does everything right. Everything about every aspect of his organization is done first class by first class people who have as their example of success, their boss, Roger Penske. And this is kind of interesting, I think. You know, back in the early 90s, I believe it was 1992, he had made an engine choice and there were some rules changes that left him without a car in the field at, at Indy. I remember the look on his face as qualifications closed and there were no Penske cars in the field. 
um, he didn't take that lightly and he didn't take it well. And he embarked on a secret engine project that brought about the 1993 Penske Mercedes engine that doggone near lapped the field, led 193 out of 200 laps at Indy and won the race. Um, engine quickly banned by cart, by the way. Uh, but that day, that the, the day that I saw him walking off the grid uh, without a car in the field, when I saw the pain in his face, it occurred to me how much he loved the sport and loved the place, the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. You know, and, and frankly, in the years since the grandson of Tony Holman, Tony George, uh, ran the, the organization surrounding the Indianapolis Motor Speedway and when he started the Indy Racing League, you know, this was essentially one of the most important organizations, one of the most important facilities in the history of motorsports. And it was being run by a bratty grandson that didn't have a clue. And as race fans, I think it was disappointing to most of us for, gosh, what, 20, 20 25 years to see that organization led poorly. What great news, whether you're a fan or not, what great news that one of the most responsible, most reverent lovers of motorsport and the Indianapolis Motor Speedway is now its conservator. And he has an organization that certainly isn't going away when the 82-year-old Roger Penske decides to hang it up or, or the Lord takes him. Um, this is an organization built for the long haul. The Speedway and open wheel racing in America are in unbelievably capable hands. Nothing but respect, Mr. Penske. Thank you for taking on this project. It's a good day, race fans. It's a really, really good day. That's all for this one. Grace to you and peace, my friends, from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember, the word is sharp. Go Team Penske.